Hey everybody, Jason McKee, Tony Merle for Buck Bomb Live. Uh, pretty excited about this week. We got the grand prize winner for the bragging board. Oh, there's been a there's been a lot of conversation out there. People trying to trying to get their votes in and try to get our winner out there. Yeah, so we'll, we'll announce the winner at the end. Right now, we're going to go over since we have all the all the pieces to the grand uh, the kit that he'll be the winner will be getting. Tony, you want to go over that? Yeah, so we, we wanted to, you know, it sort of fits this week because we're talking about mock scrapes. So the grand prize winner, you know, the winning picture of, of, of all eight weeks of, of the bragging board gets this mock scrape kit. And so what you get is you get one dominant buck air stall, which you guys are probably real familiar with. You actually get two cans of the, uh, the Buck Bomb Extras, which uh, we can go into more detail about this. You probably heard about it a little bit, but... This is actually a, it's a certified doe estrus that uh, is, uh, it's a lot different than our other doe esters, so we'll tell you more about that in a little bit. But uh, we've also got the uh, <clears throat> the four ounce synthetic forehead gland scent. And, you know, it's in a, a four, like I said, four ounce bottle. It's got the dripper head there. It's great for doing mock scrapes like we're doing here today. And uh, for using these type of scents, you know, these dripper bottles, the detonator as well. So it's a scent wick that actually rolls up and comes out and you can use it on the tree that way. And in addition to that, you, you also get your choice of a buck bomb hat. So this is one of the options you get. There's a couple others you can see on the website. But this is what you get right here, two of these. So uh, we'll let you know at the end who the winner is. Yep. So so again, this week is all about mock scrapes. We, we went over f uh, feed attractants, you know, set up some cameras over some, some feed sites. Um, again, coming from a state where we can't use baits and minerals um, I have been using mock scrapes for I mean probably eight nine years now to get just to get you know deer in front of my camera so I can do my inventory uh, but obviously not being able to use bait I had to come up with another measure so we're actually going to go over how to set up a mock scrape for those who haven't done it um, there was a, actually a great question um, that was posted when, when we posted the graphic about the mock scrape someone uh, asked is it better is, is it okay? Is it better to start a mock scrape in an existing scrape, or just to start a whole new one? And really, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, to me, putting your scrape in, a, in an existing scrape isn't so much a mock scrape because the work's already been started for you. Sure. Really, really, what I use mock scrapes for is to get deer to a specific spot where I want them. Um, probably the hardest part about taking over an existing scrape is, I mean, not all scrapes are created equal. I mean. You guys have all seen it, you know, around about mid-October, you know, you'll start seeing some scrapes popping up, especially in the Midwest at least. And then by the end of October, November, I mean, they're just, they pop up at random, just seemingly everywhere. So, I mean, th those are obviously scrapes, but what you're really trying to create with a mock scrape is what I consider a community scrape. And a good example is that one of the first ones I ever started on my family farm. Um, I've, I've been running that scrape for probably six, seven years now. And after year one, I don't have to go back every year and restart that scrape. Because once those deer found it, they took it over, they started leaving their scent behind, and year after year they keep coming back to that scrape. I've got I've got trail camera pictures of deer hitting that scrape. Now they're not they're not, you know, pawing the dirt, they're not, you know, actively engaging the scrape, but they're walking up, they're sniffing the you know, they're sniffing that licking branch on into April and May. I mean I've got trail camera pictures. It's wow. amazing how good a mock scrape can be as far as keeping track of your inventory year, literally year round. And then uh, if you saw the graphic we posted earlier this week, uh, a gentleman, actually a friend of mine now by the name of John Irwin, uh, killed 162, I believe 162 and 7 eighths inch 10 pointer with me. Um, I guess it's been four, four or five years, years ago now in a mock scrape I started on a lease I had in Illinois and he, John was the first person to ever hunt the blind that I had set up on that mock scrape and the very first morning that John was in in Georgia or in Illinois from Georgia he shot a 162 inch 10 pointer that was standing in my mock scrape when he shot him and if you look at the graphic that we posted earlier this week I actually had a camera over that That's mock awesome. scrape and I got a picture of his buck probably 15 30 seconds before he shot him so coming right I mean, to it John, John of all people has seen himself you know what a good mock scrape can you know I mean you're not always going to kill kill deer over a mock scrape just like you won't kill you know always kill deer over any setup but like I said for, for states where you can't use baits and minerals or even for states where you can 
what I have noticed is versus a bait site or a mineral site, you're definitely going to, I do believe you'll get a lot more buck activity, obviously, at a scrape, especially in October and November, than you would at just, you know, a mineral site or whatever. I mean, those, those bucks are checking the, that scrape for a specific reason. I've got, I've got, again, you know, three week windows on one trail, one, one mock scrape where, you know, I can verify I had at least 20, 20 plus different bucks hit that same scrape, come to check that same scrape, you know, in a three week period between the end of October and November. So we're going to go over how to set up, uh, set them up and go over some various ideas. And obviously we've got a, a variety of products and we'll kind of go over how you can utilize those. A lot, of, a lot of tools that can go right. into the process. It's Absolutely. not just, you know. And a lot, of, a lot of that. tools that, again, over the years I've kind of learned uh, some little extra extras that you might not think about that allow you to put those mock scrapes right where you want them. Um, a, mock, a, a mock scrape is kind of like, kind of like a stand, you know. You, you'll be scouting a property and you'll find a spot where you can see, you know, there's, there's a, lot of tra a lot of traffic coming through here. And I, I've, I've hunted a lot of different properties between leases and just being invited to hunt new properties and it never fails. That first year is always really kind of learning what the deer are doing. And so there's been a lot of times where, you know, I've got in on a new piece and set up cameras where I've found travel corridors, but no way to stop them. And so I get a lot of, a lot of blurry images of deer walking past. So once, I, once I, I found that area on a new piece of ground where I know there's deer moving through that area consistently, that's where I want my, my mock scrape. Up. You know, you're not putting a mock scrape out in the middle of a field where deer aren't, you know, you're, you're trying to find those travel corridors and then that mock scrape is gonna be to stop them from just passing through. Uh, again, stop them long enough to get a picture of them and in John's case, stop them long enough to put an arrow in them. That's, that's what we're really trying to get to anyway, right? right? Right, so we'll we'll go over, uh, but again, no different than a stand site. You know, sometimes you'll find that magical spot, and then you're looking around. It's like there's not that perfect tree. You know, so you got to get creative. And you know, how am I going to get a stand in here and get shooting lanes? A mock scrape's no different. You find that perfect spot. There may not be the perfect tree with a limb. You know, a licking branch. It's going to be at that right height. So there's little tricks that I learned over the year where you, you can get that licking branch on any tree you want to, and, and get that mock scrape right, right where you feel like you need it. Cool. So. You ready to do it? Let's do it. Awesome. Let's do it. So, real quick though, before before we actually start setting one up, we'll kind of go over again a tool bag, tool kit that you can consider. Obviously, for your licking branch, you're going to want to get that scent at about head height on a buck because they love to get their antlers up in there, and then of course they're transferring those forehead gland scents onto that licking branch. And again, it's just it's a it, it's it's basically a scent marker. You know, so every buck, every doe that walks up there and licks that branch or you know rubs their forehead on, they're leaving their 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 specific scent on there. So again, you're gonna to wanna to get some sort of scent at about head height on that licking branch. You can use, you know, a standard wick. Um, one thing that I started doing um, was actually taking a scent drag because for me, the scent drag kind of soaked up more, a little more scent. And so what I would do is I would take a scent drag and actually cut it, tie it around my, my licking branch and then cut it off and essentially use a scent drag. So that's why that's there. Um, the other thing is, the last thing you want on your licking branch or, or your, your mock scrape or anywhere around your mock scrape, just like anything else, is your scent. So I always, always use gloves as I'm setting these things up so I'm not leaving my own scent on my mock scrape. Um, this is actually pretty, a pretty, pretty useful tool on several levels. Number one, the obvious one is, again, you find that tree and it doesn't have that perfect licking branch. You find you find your limb that'll fit. This is basically just, you can go to Home Depot, any hardware store, this is a flagpole holder. So basically, you find a you find a branch that's got a diameter. You can get it in that flagpole holder, then you screw that to the tree. We're going to actually do that here. So basically, you might need a saw to saw off, you know, that limb to get that limb in there. There's another use for this that a lot of people don't probably wouldn't think of when you're setting up a mock scrape that I learned basically through trial and error, um, just watching how the deer took over the, the first mock scrape I set up. When they first took it over, of course, the, all the attention was on the mock scrape and. Early on, it was a lot of does, and, and you know, end of September, October, there's a lot of does, a lot of young bucks. You know, those big bucks were kind of still being reclusive. Um, but as soon as those big bucks started coming in there, you know, first same thing, they're 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 they're, they're gonna they're the ones that are gonna start pawing the dirt back. And then you know, I got pictures of them, you know, obviously hitting that licking branch with their antlers and leaving their scent behind. And then what was interesting was by about the second week in November, a tree just like this one right here. Next thing I know, I got pictures of them putting a rub right there on, on my tree. And so now if you walked up to that tree on, on our family farm, I mean, it's it's scarred up. I mean, so again, 
not only is the mock scrape now become a community scrape that they they visit every year, but every year they go right back to work on that rub. So essentially what I started doing was, again, just to be able to add more scent and make it a little more realistic, is I take my saw, and, and I'll, I'll demonstrate this on there, but I'll actually take the saw and start rubbing that bark off. Now, obviously, I'm not going to do it when I set my, my scrape up in, you know, August, September. But again, thinking back to what I've seen the deer do over the years on my mock scrapes, you know, end of October, November, I'm going to go back to that mock scrape and I'm going to go ahead and start that Fresh fake rub on, yep, on sure. that tree and get some of this some of this forehead gland, you know, wiped on, on that. Because again, when they're in there rubbing on that tree, they're leaving their scent on, the, on, that, on that rub. So, right. well, uh, that's kind of the toolkit, obviously. Um, and this goes back to our, our scent system that we came out with, you know, where what's what's the right time to use one urine versus another. So obviously you're probably not, if you're setting up your mock scrapes in October and, or August, September, you're probably not going to go in there and throw a, an estrus in it, in it right away. Right. So again, the scent icon system um, is really going to be about, you know, and, and that's what it's for. It's like, so I'm going to start a mock scrape with, you know, an all season scent or maybe just a straight dopey as far as you know getting it on that ground um and so we'll kind of go over that as, as we're setting this up so you want to go ahead and go ahead and set one up yeah let's do it man all right so we're gonna pretend we're, we're on a new piece of ground uh we scouted it we found a good travel corridor there there's a deer standing right there oh. so we know the deer coming through we've come in we've kind of looked around we we haven't found a, the ideal tree with that licking branch at the perfect height so our, our best option is to just create one, so that's what we're going to do. So, I'm and guys, while Jason and Tony are setting up this mark scrape, feel free to answer or to ask any questions, and they'll be happy to answer yeah, them. Absolutely. Like I said, we had a great question earlier this week, you know, and so any questions as we're going through this, feel free to stop us and be more than happy to answer them. What are you going to want to use to uh, put the scent on the limb once you get there? You the scent on the limb? Yep. Well, that's the thing. We'll probably just uh, we'll probably just put it on either a wick okay. and then rub it on the tree. Or I mean, I got gloves on, so I can actually just use the gloves and because that's synthetic. That's that's one thing. That's another thing we need to point out is we've got the the forehead gland that we're going to use is a synthetic. Um, the good thing about it, synthetics is they don't break down like a like a natural urine will uh, when exposed to oxygen over time. So it'll that's last longer. They, yeah, exactly. That synthetic scent is going to stay stay where you put it for quite a while. We set off, if you guys remember last week, we set off uh, the synthetic doe estrus bomb. Now that was a week ago today, and literally, even my kids were com commenting on they could still smell it like over the past few days. And so, I mean, it's literally stuck to, you know, trees and leaves right here in my backyard to where you can still, you can still get a hint of, so again, those synthetics, they have their place, especially with something like this. That's where what you, you get for being Jason's neighbor. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So my neighbors have been sitting on synthetic <laughs> doe estrus all week. All right. So we'll need this. I got my gloves. We'll grab the doe pee. And you've got this forehead you got scent. Forehead. You got a detonator. Grab that detonator. Yep. All right. So again, we've done our scouting. We've just, we've established that this is a good travel corridor, but we don't have a, a tree, an ideal tree with a, a naturally occurring limb at the right height. Uh, for our licking branch, so what we're going to do is, to save time, I've already cut down a limb. Uh, so basically, what we're going to do is, we're going to use my old handy hardware tool, which is again, it's just a, it's just a basic flagpole holder. You can buy at any hardware store. So we're going to kind of find where that, where, where we got to put that on the tree to get that ideal height. Now, now keep in mind obviously a white-tailed deer that's fairly close to the right you know natural height. You don't want it to where that buck's necessarily got to work too hard to get his antlers up in there so you basically want it I always hang mine get my branch about eye level to me and that's going to be kind of about where that buck's rack is going to be you know as he approaches it and that way he can really get up in there and I mean I've got pictures of the, they'll when, when the rut when they when that those testosterone levels get up there they get pretty aggressive with that licking branch, so that's about a perfect height, I think, right there. So we'll we'll go right there. Tony, you want to uh, hold, you wanna hold that for me? Yep. Oh, see, Tony forgot his gloves. Now he's got scent. Oh. He's got his scent all over my mock scrape. Tony's teaching you what not to do. That's why Tony doesn't kill any big bucks. <laughs> oh. Yeah. No, he knows that's not true. He got him a good one last year.
Now again, you want, I mean, I'm using some pretty, pretty long screws because again, once these bucks, once those testosterone low levels get up there, they're gonna come in here and they're gonna, they're gonna get pretty aggressive with this branch. So I wanna make sure I've got it secured to the tree really good. It's not gonna do me any good if it ends up on the ground. I got my limb. I mean, to be technical, there's actually a screw up here that you would have put in to make sure you know your branch is not going to come out of your. So there's a screw there. You would go ahead and put that in there, obviously, to secure it fully. So now we got our licking branch. Again, well, this is actually a little bit high, but that's all right. So I try to set mine by eye level. I mean, if, if he wants to get to it, he's going to get to it. I mean, I've got them. You know, they'll they'll get up on their hind legs and to get their head up in there. Stretch out. Stretch out as far as they yeah. can. They'll, they'll get to it when they want to get to it. So the next step again, I want to get that forehead gland on that licking branch. So you could use, like I said, you could use a wick, a regular wick. I like the detonator and I'll, I'll show you why. Number one, it's going to hold more scent. You get the forehead gland. So yep. basically it's on you want to drop it. So basically the way the detonator works is this thing actually draws back up in there. And it's, you can see it's got an O-ring here, so it's airtight. Once you get it closed, it's airtight. It's not going to leak out. The other cool thing about this thing, which is kind of interesting, is this little tape right here is actually it's it's actually reflective tape. So it also you know it, it basically when you shine your light, you'll know exactly where it's at in the dark. Yep. So basically, you're just going to take it. You're going to hang it. I'm going to I'm going to do this. I'll break. I mean, I would. So we'll go ahead and fill it up, and to fill it, you just pop the cap. And as you can see, the the actual thread is coiled up in there. You want to go ahead and pour it in. You got the forehead gland sent here. It's got the the no mess cap here. Yeah, and again, that's a synthetic, so it's gonna it's gonna stay nice and potent. Now, how much do you put in here? Jason? I would fill it up. Actually, don't don't use the whole bottle though, because <laughs> we're gonna need some for the. Our, our mock rub also. That should be pretty good. Yeah, that should be good. All right, so we got our synthetic forehead gland in there. And again, going, going back to the example of John Irwin's buck on that uh, that post, the graphic we put up earlier this week, if you notice, there, there was a yellow ribbon hanging that was circled in that, that picture. So years back, Buck Bomb had, we had what we call the scrape generator, which, which is what that yellow ribbon was. And it came with this same, the same synthetic scent already pre-saturated into that ribbon and so again the, the proof is right there in the photo I mean for whatever reason it, it doesn't really smell strong when you smell it in the bottle or you smell it on, on the wick it doesn't have a really strong smell you know it, we're probably expecting it to smell like urine and but it doesn't it's, it's not nope. urine it's not it's not a it's not mimicking a urine it's mimicking a gland yeah. so it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of misleading it's like like i said you know we're all used to deer scents being really strong and really potent well this isn't but again you know the, the proof is in the pictures i mean for whatever reason it gets there and, and again deer's noses are far stronger than ours well exactly oh, yeah. exactly oh, yeah. and this is the exact stuff that was in that picture so it yeah. proves it right there exactly that exact same thing so i'm gonna go ahead and before i hang it up i'm gonna go ahead and pull my wick out you can see the scent now saturated there it goes you're going to see the scent is actually saturated oh, yeah. into the ribbon. Now I'm just going to hang my ribbon. Now I've got that I've got that forehead gland scent. At, I probably don't want that hang it down that much because when he gets to hammering on it and gets his antlers up, I'm going to pull it down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I didn't tie it on. You'll want to actually tie that sucker on, make sure it's it's not going to come off because again, they're going to get aggressive with that branch eventually. So now I've got my forehead gland scent where it needs to be. So the next step, obviously, is, and again, this is all about timing. I, I like to set my mock scrapes. Um, I usually try to set mine up. Again, I, I kind of wait on the weather. I usually set my mock scrapes up about the time the bucks are starting to shed their velvet. Again, their testosterone levels are going to start. That, that's really what triggers that, vel that shedding of that velvet. And then basically every week after that, you know, th through to the rut, those their testosterone level and aggressive aggressiveness levels are going to peak. So usually about September, early September, late August, if I'm setting up a brand new mock scrape, that's usually when I'm going to get out there and, and get it. Because again, I want those does to find it early because they'll they'll start marking it. 
and I want those young bucks to you know find it because they'll start marking it. And essentially, again, they're they're basically taking that mock scrape over the first time another deer comes and and works that branch or you know, I mean, again, they've got inner digital glands in between in, in their in between their their front hooves. So even if she even if that doe just steps in it, she is leaving her scent in that in that mock scrape. So for every deer that come and hits it, there's another there's another sign, there's another sign, there's another sign. So again, once those by the time those bucks get up on their feet and they start moving and really kind of doing the whole, you know, hey, this is my turf, there's already natural sin in there. So the great thing about a mock scrape is, again, kind of unlike a bait site, I don't have to keep going back to it, you know, and, and refreshing it. Because again, once I once those deer start start coming to it, they're refreshing it as much as it needs to be refreshed. Hands off. Exactly. <laughs> they're doing the work off. for you. That's right. So let's say I set it up, you know, the first week of September. I'm probably not going to go ahead and do anything with the ground other than put some urine there. I'm not going to rake the leaves back and make a big old dirt bowl there yet. See, that's interesting because I think most people would think if you're doing a mock scrape, you're going to rake the leaves yeah. away. I don't. I'm not saying you can't. But, again, I'm trying to mimic what I've seen in nature. I don't see a whole lot of, you know, really aggressive pawing in September and August. So I'm not going to go and do that on my right. mock scrape. I'm going to, again, I'm going to try and play it as close to what I see in nature, what I've seen in nature. So, I'm, again, I'll put some scent on the ground, probably just some straight doe pee. So we got that, we have that now both in a bomb or in the four ounce offering. I mean, either way, you can sit there and spray the, you know, the doe pee down there, or you can, if you got the four ounce, you can, you know, squeeze it on the ground. So, again, I'm not going to put any estrus in it, obviously, in September. I'm not going to go and get all aggressive and tear the ground up in September. I'm just going to, again, get it started, get that forehead gland scent there, get some urine, some scent you know, concentrated right below it, and all of a sudden it's gonna be like, okay, you know, that's, that's, that's a mock scrape. Yeah. So that's how you start it. Now, again, your timing, you're not gonna wanna come back and, you know, and keep spreading your scent all over. So I'm gonna start it end of, end of August, early September. I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go till probably, you know, all October. Like, I, I don't like to check my cameras except for maybe once a month. So since I'm going to be coming to check my camera, that I'm going to time my camera check with when you know nature says, okay, it's time to start pawing that dirt back. So probably around you know October first, somewhere within that first that you know that first week of October, I'm going to go ahead and come back in. Now, again, I mean you're going to be walking to this site, so just look around. If you're starting to see some some you know mild scrapes on the edges of fields or, or whatever, then then you know if you're not seeing anything. Go ahead and wait a little while before you pull that dirt back. And all this talk about timing, this this comes back to our scent icon system that we're introducing this exactly. year. That's a great point. Exactly. So there you go. Good example is we're saying it right here. I mean, this is a the dopey. We're we're kind of saying, look, it's a it's a ideal pre rut, post rut, and there you go, your mock scrape right there. I, and again, I mean, you know, we're also we're also showing it as a good cover scent because you know, again, you know, it's it's universal. Deer pe does are peeing year round. This has no hormones in it. It's not supposed to be mimicking you know a doe and esters. So go ahead and go ahead and spray it on your boots or whatever as you're going into, you know, to set up your mock scrape or check your cameras. Do you have a preference of using the drippers or the aerosols for this type of application? I, I don't. Other than other than that goes back to a recent visit we did with a veterinarian um, who studies deer re reproductive, and we asked that question. You know, look, you know, is what's the what's the average volume you know when, when a deer pees because again i mean that's kind of the reason for the little bit larger size fluid uh liquid urines is according to her you know a, a healthy doe she should be putting down six to eight ounces every time she urinates well if you're only putting down one ounce or a half ounce that's that's not mimicking what's actually naturally occurring right so a couple drips is not really that exactly. realistic so you know you take the, the aerosol bomb, it's 6.65 .6 ounces. You know, this is 4.4 4 ounces. So it, I don't really have a preference between these two, you know, these two vessels. As long, I just want to make sure I get enough scent concentrated, you know, on that ground to where, again, it's going to be as close to natural as possible. So let's say we started our mock scrape last month. We're going back in early October. We're seeing, a, you know, some of the little, you know, the little bucks, the younger bucks are starting to just do, you've seen them, they're, they're not very aggressive, you know, it's, you can barely notice them unless you look for them, it's a little bit of scraping like that, but you know, they haven't, they haven't cleared out the bowl, as I, as I like to call it. So now I know I'm okay to go ahead and hit mine again, so I might come back instead of with a doe pee, I might come back with an ambush, 
you know, something that, that has a little little different smell to it. I mean, the, the ambush actually has, I believe, doe and young buck urine. Mm -hmm. So now I'm mimicking multiple deer. Now again, that by high. this point, yeah. by this point, I probably really don't need to put anything in it because hopefully by that point, the deer have actually started coming to it themselves and leaving their semi. So either way, if they haven't already started clearing the leaves back, I'm not gonna get crazy with it. I'm just gonna make it look like everything else I've seen at this point in time, you know, so it's, it's not the big, you know, totally cleaned out bowl. I'm just gonna go ahead and rough the ground up a little bit. Now, since I'm roughing the ground up, why not, why not go ahead and add some scent to it? Again, if I'm seeing some rubs, but it, again, it's it's not the it's not the big boys getting out there, you know, just just tearing into them. This is what I this is what I was talking about earlier. That I, again, I've just kind of learned trial and error over the years. Um, because again, that very first scrape of mine turned into also a rub. So if I'm seeing you know some of these these starter rubs, these early rubs, now I know it's okay. I can come in here with my saw and start marring up my tree here. Again, just kind of mimicking what I'm seeing in nature. You know, it's not, they're not cleaning the bark off yet. They're just kind of rubbing. So you can use your tree saw to go ahead and, you know, start stripping that bark away. And again, you know, setting up not only a mock scrape, but a mock rub. Now, the buck just made that with the same, same antlers as he made this with. So it only makes sense that if he's leaving his, his forehead gland here, naturally there should be forehead glands. That's a good here. point. I didn't even think about that. So, again, I'm gonna go back to my synthetic forehead scent. You could use your glove, or you, you could use a rag or, or whatever. I'm just gonna use my glove. I'm gonna rub some of that where I started this, this mock rub. Again, that's what's gonna happen in nature. When he's in there tearing into that thing, he's gonna be transferring his forehead scent onto that rub. You know, that's funny. You don't hear about people doing a lot, a lot of mock rubs and things like that, no. but it's exactly the same as a mock scrape. Exactly. Antlers and forehead. Antlers and again, forehead. this was, this, you know, this was just trial and error. You know, I, like I said, I noticed when I first started my first one and left the camera over it, you know, the whole season, they started here. And then, like I said, as those bucks really revved up and started getting more territorial, next thing I know, I'm getting pictures of them hitting the scrape and then they're getting in there. And like I said, by the end of the season, there was, there was a rub that they started. I didn't even start this, but then it, it clicked in my head. It's like, okay, if I'm mimicking nature, I've seen this actually happen, naturally occur. I'm gonna start, you know, implementing this on my future mock scrapes. Yeah. So again, timing wise, you know, by now deer should be coming to it. I'm, I'm mimicking what I'm seeing in nature. And then obviously end of October, you know, that, that magical week of Halloween is kind of in the Midwest where we really start seeing the bucks. You, know, you, oh, you yeah. start getting the text from your buddies. Game time. Yeah, you start getting the text from your buddies. You start you start seeing it on Instagram. You know, oh man, big deer starting to drop. You know, and everybody's like, oh, they're chasing. I, f I saw my first chase. You know, first mature buck. That's the time now. I'm going to come in. I'm going to check my camera again. Again, I've kind of I've allowed a three to four week window. The October lull is over supposedly, and the bucks should be on their feet. Now they're getting more territorial. Now you're gonna start seeing, you know, what I like to call again, the bowl. You're gonna start seeing leaves and basically everything that was there is gonna be just dirt. Again, there should be a lot of scent naturally there. I, I may not touch it as far as putting any more scent in there because why, why would I need to? But I am gonna come back and if they, if they haven't, you know, go ahead, if they haven't taken this part over, then now I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna, again, I'm just gonna go in there and I'm gonna start really getting into it and start, you know, getting that, that those, I'm gonna start putting that rub on there that we've all seen it, you know, in the sunshine, you can see them from 80, 90 yards away. Yeah. So now I'm gonna get that signpost rub going and get it get it to where it looks like, you know, a big mature buck is coming here. He's found his scrape, he's found this scrape and he's saying, oh, it's mine guys, back off. Now, the interesting thing is not only are you gonna leave this, but just like a natural rub, all of your, all of your shavings are falling at the base of your tree. You know, so again, I mean, visually speaking, you know, now what I am going to do, unless, unless, again, a buck's already come in here and stripped that off, if it looks like they haven't really gotten aggressive with this, if I'm going to touch that again, then again, I'm going to go right back, and I'm going to freshen, you know, freshen up with more, more of my forehead glands. So again, it, it's real simple. I mean, it's, it's not complicated. Again, we're just mimicking what's naturally occurring in nature, and again, Honestly, by November, you may not have to do any of this because by then, if you've got it in that travel corridor, those other deer have been hitting it. They've been, they've been doing the marking for you. You can basically just sit back and check your camera.
yeah. and get ready. You get it started, and, and they take it from there. That's right. And like I said, I mean, I've, I've got I've got community scrapes now that I started five, six, seven years ago. I don't literally. I go back out now. I don't mess with the scrape. I don't mess with the licking branch. I go out there, put my camera up, and I walk off. And I know, I know, year after year, I've got. I mean, I have pictures of a real nice two-year-old nine-pointer. I have him the next year when he was a really nice three-year-old nine-pointer, and I had him again last year as a four-year-old every year, right back to that same scrape. So really, really interesting tool. If you haven't tried mock scrapes, give them a try. We got any uh, questions, Cookie? No questions yet. Really? I think, I mean, y'all are, are being real descriptive. I mean, I'm covering waiting. it all. I'm waiting for them all to flood in once we get yeah. done with it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what will happen. So like I said, guys, I mean, I've had a lot of su success with them, and again, there are states where you can't bait. Now, again, the other advantage is, even in some of the states when where you can bait in the off off season, in a lot of those states, you got to pull that bait before you can hunt. Right. Or you can't hunt within a certain distance of that bait. So, as far as actually having a chance of killing something over where you've been baiting and, and had your minerals out. In a lot of states, even if you can put them out, you can't hunt within whatever 200 yards of them, 100 yards, or you got to pull that that bait out, you know, before you can hunt in that general area. With a mock scrape, you don't have to worry about it. Right. I mean, you're, you know, it is what it is. So, I mean, what's really cool is you talk about bait being illegal in areas, that forehead gland, that's synthetic. So even exactly. if you're in, in Canada or, or in a state that doesn't allow natural scents, the forehead gland scent is And that's a, that's a very good point, Tony, because again, now, when the rut's kicking, that I, I always take the week of Veterans Day off, meet up with a bunch of my buddies, and that's kind of how we do our, our Veterans Day celebration. We always hunt that week. I mean, th that's the magical time of the year in the Midwest. So that t at that time, that's where the new extras comes in. So at that time, obviously, the bucks are looking for the hot dough. That's when I'm probably going to come in and go ahead and take something, and I'm going to say, look, that's what he's looking for now. That's what I'm going to give him, and I'm going to go ahead and go in with an, an extra scent, an extras. I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'm going to put the whole can in there, because again, I, the bucks are on their feet, they're moving. By this time, they should know where that scrape is. I should have a few good bucks hitting that scrape. Now, if they're anywhere in the area, I want, or let's say they come through at night, but they smell that there's a hot dough that's been in that scrape, he's probably not going to go very far. Or if he does go and search ever, he's probably going to come back. To, to check. I mean, once typically once a buck gets the, gets the scent of a hot doe, he's gonna he's gonna stay somewhere somewhere in that area. So, again, you're you're really just you're really just utilizing your scrape by mimicking nature, and it, it, like I said, it, it's worked great for me. Now, a, another you, you brought up a good point though. The forehead gland, regardless of whether your state allows natural urines or not, you're still gonna be able to use that because it's in, synthetic. Along those same lines, we do have a synthetic doe and estrus. So even in states where you can't, you know, you can't use yep. an estrus or you can't use a, a natural doe pee, you can still use that, that, you know, synthetic. Besides the uh, forehead gland, the synthetic forehead gland, we do have a dominant buck synthetic, and we also have a uh, all season. All well. season. So there, there's your good cover scent. There's your good starter since we don't have a a, a doe pee synthetic. <laughs> you use that all season because again it does have it does it is mimicking the right. smell of both a, a yeah. young buck it's just kind of overall deer scent it's exactly. one of the best curiosity scents yeah. there is and that's and that's, that's really what you're looking for exactly that's yep. what the, when you're talking about travel routes and getting deer to stop i mean the curiosity is what's going to draw them in absolutely all right well i mean that's really all there is to a mock script they're, they're not all that difficult again you know it's it's really just you're just trying to mimic what's already happening in nature anyway and again the whole point is you know, maybe the only tree I could get my stand in was, you know, this one. And, you know, but the deer, the deer are coming through the general area, but I, I want to get them obviously within bow range. So again, my mock scrape, I'm trying to dictate, I'm trying to dictate where I want those deer to, to focus their attention. And again, since I don't have to pull it, you know, I can hunt right over the top of it. And then as John, John Irwin can attest, I have had a few deer killed out of my mock scrape. So. <laughs> Do we got any questions, Cookie? I think that covers it. Cool. All right. Well, I guess probably what everybody cares about, honestly. They're, they're probably sitting there saying, "All right, get through with the mock scrapes. We want to, we want to hear about who won." Well, right. if you're if you've looked on the uh, the post, you can probably see who won. It was Patrick Hurley. His photo that he submitted in the bragging board that right was here. that was everyone's favorite. He got the most likes on there, 
And uh, actually, a close second place was was Tim Coots. Man, he had a great deer on yeah. there too. Yeah, yes, yeah. He, he's actually posted a couple of good deer. Yeah, there's there's a lot of people that were very active, and they were they were showing us lots of pictures throughout. So yeah. it was a lot of fun to see that happen. Yeah. So basically, he's already seen what he's getting. He's get he's going to get his own kit, uh, basically a, a mock scrape starter kit. So if you yeah. if you've never tried one, we're going to send you what you need to get started. Obviously, you get the your choice of the Buck Bomb hat. Yep. So he needs to send us a message. Yep. We'll get his address and we'll, we'll get that out to him. Now, the the bragging board kind of was slow at first and then kind of picked up steam. And, and it's kind of funny. It's like once we got to the final, we well, all of a sudden we had people, am I too late? Yeah. It's like, so, you know, <laughs> and, and, and really, I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, you stop and think about it. It's like really within the past two weeks is really when these bucks have now started filling out. Yeah. So, so that nobody's disappointed since it seemed like people were actually enjoying the, the trail camera contest. We do, we, we do want to announce we have the hit, lot, hit list contest coming up. All right, so we're going to so, keep rolling into a new promotion. Yeah, we're not, we're not <laughs> done with the trail camera contest. Now what we want to see, since it's that time of year, is we want to, we want to see those hit list bucks. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, get that one, we'll get that one kicked off. And similarly, at the end of it all, we'll pick a top five. Mm -hmm. um, they won't be weak sauce this time. <laughs> yeah, a lot of this point, all these deers have started to really develop, yeah. and you can you yeah. can really see what they're going to become this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they, they've they've filled out now to a point where most guys are like, "There's my shooter. There's my one that needs another year. There's my you know." So mm -hmm. yep. that's what the hit list is going to be about. We we want to see the ones that you know guys are guys are fired up over and and are going to get after this year. Those those legitimate hit list deer that you're going to be going to be hammered this down this will be on. fun because the whole time like you said they're going to be totally filled out you know yeah at the beginning of bragging board they just had little antlers this time around it's going to be yeah full deal. Gonna be a lot of eye candy on this one. Oh yeah and so again at the end uh there will we will do, we'll do we'll do it the same way you know we'll give the viewers a chance to pick the the best ones and at the end there'll be another grand prize winner we'll have, we'll have to figure out what we're going to do for a grand prize though because it'll be a little late by then to do a mock scrape kit yeah i'm sure uh i'm sure it'll be a, a good little kit though uh, yeah. i think uh I think we'll come up with something good you guys will have to tune in and find out next week what we come up with i'll tell you what here's what we'll do the the better the better the better our viewers actually get into that the more pictures we get engagement and more yeah the more engagement right. we get the more pictures we start seeing if, if the turnout's really good and engagement's really good We'll keep that in mind as we as we figure out what the what the ultimate prize pack. We will we will reward you for uh, your that's your right. engagement. How's that? That's right. All right. Well, I mean that's that's pretty like I said that's pretty much it for a mock scrape. If you guys have cool. any questions? Well, congratulations, Patrick Hurley yeah. again. Yeah. Reach out to us so we can get all, get all your gear to you. I have a feeling we might see that buck again on the hit list. <laughs> yeah, I think so. There's a good chance. He'd be on my hit list. I can tell you that. <laughs> so all right, appreciate you guys joining us again. We we'll back next Thursday, same time. Right. What are we going over next week, Tony? Next week, I can tell you right now, I've got the list. <laughs> so next week, first week of August, we're gonna we're gonna move along and we're gonna we're gonna do a, a bit of a, a refocus on scent attractants. You're gonna kind of go over the whole line. The whole line, you know, we've got we talked about how we've got the four ounce naturals, the four ounce synthetics. We've got the. the the aerosols, the synthetic aerosols, there's a lot there, so we're going to kind of go over all that and make sure. Dive a little more clear. in depth. Yeah, yeah, just, uh, you know, that'll be another great opportunity to ask questions uh, about any of, the, any of the mock scrapes or spraying stuff in the tree stand, you know, when, when we like to do what. So um, that's what we'll be doing next week. All right. Cool. Good deal. Thanks, guys. See you next time.